So you have some breaking news. Uh, turns out that Michael Cohen, uh, Donald Trump's uh, ex-lawyer, uh, has a few audio tapes of him and uh, the president discussing certain payments to certain people. Hmm. Uh, now, what exactly am I talking about? What exactly are on these secret tapes? Well, it turns out it's relevant to the case of Karen McDougal. Uh, now, Karen McDougal, uh, of course, was a Playboy model. She's an ex-Playboy Playboy model now who alleges that she had an affair with Donald Trump. Now, for me, I, I think it's pretty ballsy to come out and admit that you touched that, like that you actually touched Donald Trump in his – I'm not even going to go there. Uh, okay. Um, so she comes out and, and she says – um, that she began a nearly year-long affair with Mr. Trump in 2006. That shortly after, Mr. Trump's wife, Melania, gave birth to Barron. So, uh, for one, you're cheating on your wife. That's, that's classy, right? But then, that's classic Trump. Uh, what do you expect? Now, that's not really the important thing, right? Now, the important thing is that uh, Ms. McDougal tried to sell her story. Because the National Enquirer was actually very interested. Now, look, the reason that they sell a story, and, and, and I, I, had, I actually kind of hate this, to be honest with you. Because like, ooh, I had an affair with a celebrity. I'm going to sell it to a tabloid. Yeah, make a lot of money. How sick is this planet? Like, who really cares? But nonetheless, a lot of people care because they pick up and they, and they read it and they love it. So... That's what happened here. Uh, so she tries to sell this story, and the National Enquirer comes around and says, we're going to give you $150,000 to tell your story. And she says, great, sold. I will go and I will tell my story to the National Enquirer. Now, turns out the National Enquirer never intended on publishing it because the timing here, look, McDougal wanted to tell her story because Donald Trump was in the final days of his, uh, or I should say the final months of his election campaign. So this was kind of big news. And she was like, oh, I want to sell it at this point so that I can make maximum amount of profit. That's what this is about. Uh, but the tablet itself, upon paying the money, just decided they were going to sit on the story. Now that practice is known as catch and kill. So they catch the story and then they kill it by not publishing it. Wonderful. Uh, that effectively silenced Miss McDougal for the remainder of that political campaign. So that didn't get out. And look, that was Donald Trump's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that was Michael Cohen's job is to go and stop those things from getting out that might actually hurt his campaign. That's why he was known as a fixer. So now, turns out, we've got tapes of both Michael Cohen and Donald Trump discussing these alleged payments to Ms. McDougal. So now that's interesting because it kind of goes against what the White House has actually been saying. Example, uh, when, Wall Street, when the Wall Street Journal had revealed the existence of the payment, not the tapes, because we just found the tapes, um, days before the election, Mr. Trump's campaign spokeswoman, Hope Hicks, said that we have no knowledge of any of this. Oh, no, what are you talking about? The payment? No, no payment. In fact, we've never even heard of it. Who? Karen McWho? <laughs> what? No. No idea. I, you don't know. We don't, we don't know what you're talking about. It must be fake news. In fact, that's what the president says. Fake news. Oh, no. The, the tapes don't exist. Stormy Daniel stuff doesn't exist. We didn't actually make a payment. Oh, right. Turns out we actually did make a payment. But don't worry. Cohen actually made the payment, but Cohen wasn't reimbursed. Oh, looks like Cohen was actually reimbursed. Thanks to the bank records we have. There's a lot of lies to keep straight. I mean, there's so many lies there. Like, I'm having a hard time. And I'm trying to follow this, right? Uh, so I can actually explain it to you guys. And, man, it's a lot. But anyway. Now, thing is... That recording, as I said, shows otherwise. So now, Rudy Giuliani, uh, the genius that is Donald Trump's new lawyer, 
comes out and basically confirms, yeah, okay, so it looks like you've got secret tapes talking about payment. But it turns out that those payments, or I'm sorry, those payments never happen. And so the tapes exonerate Donald Trump, and he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you're going to love this quote. He said, Nothing in that conversation suggests that he had any knowledge of it in advance of the, of the payment. He added that Mr. Trump had directed Mr. Cohen that if he were to make a payment related to the woman, write a check rather than send in cash so we could probably doc properly document it. Quote, in the big scheme of things, it's a powerful exculpatory evidence. See, turns out that tape is a good thing. Because it proves that Donald Trump doing anything wrong. Is there any way that he cannot spin something negative? Whew. I mean, the spin here is, if I had hair, it'd be blowing around uh, from that, from all that spin. Uh, but anyway, now here's the thing, right? So according to the New York Times, the Justice Department is investigating Mr. Cohen's involvement in paying women to tamp down embarrassing news stories about Mr. Trump. That's... That's the reason they, they found this entire tape. Prosecutors, are, prosecutors wanted to know whether that violated federal campaign finance laws and any conversation with Mr. Trump about those payments would be of keen interest to them. So that's why they're looking into this. That's why the tapes are such a, such a big deal in the news. Well, so let, let's talk about that, right? Why would it be keen interest to prosecutors? Well, let's see. Uh, there is a plan to pay off a model who alleges that Donald Trump had an affair with her months before an election where that information, if it had come out, would actually be incredibly damaging. Gee, I wonder why it'd be interesting. Hmm. But Giuliani says, oh, no, we didn't make the payment. So in the end, I mean, we didn't. Well, yeah, that's actually true. So for once, Giuliani is actually not lying. He's like, yeah, we didn't we didn't end up making any payment. You didn't. However, your friends over at the National Enquirer, by the way, the National Enquirer is owned by David Pecker. I, I'm not kidding. That's his name, right? Uh, David Pecker is actually a huge Donald Trump supporter. So David Pecker runs this, uh, as I said, National Enquirer is essentially a, 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 a tabloid rag, you know, conspiracy paper that you find in the grocery store. Not as bad as some of the ones that I've seen before. Uh, I mean, Bat Boy Escapes from Prison. I still remember that from when I was like eight. And I'm walking through a supermarket and I see this I see this uh, tabloid that's like, Bat Boy Escaped from Prison. I was like, who the fuck is Bat Boy? And they literally have a drawing of, of a kid that looks like a bat. Uh, but anyway, I know it's, that's, that's my first experience with tabloids just to let you know what, I, what I've seen before. Uh, but National Enquirer is not quite that bad, but it's still really bad. So here you have David Pecker, a uh, Trump friend, owns, a, owns this tabloid. Here's a story about McDougal that she's shopping around and goes, boom, let's buy this story. Let's buy it now. Now, McDougal, for all she was, concerned, she was concerned, she's like, hey, man, look, I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to get paid. Uh, the, tr the world is going to know the truth. Okay. <laughs> Probably not. I think really, to be clear, to be honest, I think it was all about, as I said before, the money. And somebody wanted a payday. And that's, that's fine. She had a story to tell, and somebody was actually willing to buy it. Uh, but Pecker bought it for the entire purpose of burying the story because think about this this would have actually sold probably a lot of issues i mean you know candidate trump has sex with you know playboy model while married to melania that sounds like definitely something the national Enquirer would normally run and that is something that will probably sell them quite a few issues in the grocery stand aisle but we never saw that because, again, they employed this um, catch and kill method. And so they murdered the story after they bought the rights to it. Well, there you go. That's what happened. 
Now, think about it this way, right? If you're unconvinced uh, that they killed it for a political reason in order to protect Donald Trump, consider if President Obama had had an affair with someone, uh, you know, while Sasha or Malia, you know, were young or, or right after they had been born. Would that not dominate every headline? Of course it would. Of course it would. In fact, they would have jumped on it. The National Enquirer would have been first to print that story. But hey, when it comes to Donald Trump, friend of David Becker, well, of course they're going to protect him. Look, this might not be criminal. No. I mean, considering if it's a campaign violation, but that probably isn't even criminal. Because think about it this way. Um, it's very likely that campaign violations or campaign finance violations, nobody's going to go after them because the FEC is an absolute mess. Um, and it's because of the way that it's been set up. The Republicans don't believe in any sort of campaign finance regulation. So when they sit on the board, they're just going to sit on their hands. No, we're not going to go and go after any campaign violators that are wealthy. And of course, the Republicans on the board, especially, are not going to go after Donald Trump. Very, very obvious, because look at the way that uh, Republican politicians in Congress treat Donald Trump. He is the alpha male. They bend over and then give them, you know, and then give Donald Trump their bananas. And if you're wondering what that's from, uh, it's, it's more of like a dominance thing. Because he is the alpha, he is, he is, the, he is the authoritarian uh, in chief. Uh, and these Republicans will always <clears throat> bow down to him so long as Republican, uh, the Republican base is behind Donald Trump. And they still are. Massively. But anyway. Now, here's the thing. It does show that Donald Trump's an enormous liar. I know, that's probably not a surprise. Uh, in fact, look, that's why Cohen, uh, it, flipping is such a big deal, right? Because this isn't the only tape. There are more, there's more than one tape. In fact, there's probably a lot of tapes. Uh, in fact, let me go to uh, Raw Story here on that. Um, for one... Uh, according to a statement read by uh, John King, uh, who is a television host, he said, the president said, I can't believe Michael would do this to me. Okay. Uh, and also, Michael Cohen has other recordings in his records that were seized by the FD FBI. That's CNN's Oliver Darcy uh, reporting that. Hmm. He also said the knowledge of Trump's reactions came to the network from an unnamed source close to the matter, as well as Rudy Giuliani. Oh boy. <laughs> now, as far as Cohen is concerned, um, he, ha he has not made a statement on this. In fact, uh, Cohen's lawyer, Lanny J. Davis, said, quote, we have nothing to say on this matter. So, when asked about the tape. Fascinating. Now look, personally, if you... If you don't think Trump slept with those models, I, what planet are you on? <laughs> he totally did. Yeah, of course he did. And that's, uh, look, not only that, but of course paid them off. Now, do you think this will impact the election? No, it's very, very unlikely. I, I got news for you guys. Trump supporters are not going to care. And as I said before, campaigns, finance violations, very unlikely to be enforced. So what the fallout of this will be is likely probably nothing. Yes, it proves he's a massive liar, proves he's a cheater. But then again, we already kind of knew that. So I guess at the end of the day, what we need to do is, is look, if you want to defeat Trump, this is not the way to do it. These stories are interesting. They're, they're very salacious. Um, and they do show you what kind of character or what kind of characters Donald Trump surrounds himself with, as well as what kind of character Donald Trump himself is. But at the same time, 
if you want to win an election, you run on issues. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.